So how do we solve these uh, nonlinear dynamic equations? The most common approach is to use an incremental formulation where we write the equation of motions at two different consecutive time steps, take their difference, and we end up with what is known as the incremental form of the equations of motion. For linear systems, it doesn't make much difference whether you solve the direct equations or you solve for the increment in the response. But for nonlinear equations, it makes a significant difference because if we write the nonlinear equation of motion in incremental terms, we will end up with you know a mass and a damping term but we'll end up with an incremental stiffness term delta fs that term is a lot easier to deal with than the full restoring force term because if we go back to thinking about a nonlinear force displacement relationship for our restoring force as a function of displacement we see that you know typically you have something like that and as you can see as you're solving every time step even though the whole curve is nonlinear from time step to time step it's possible to see that you know these are close to linear segments and so since the only thing we really know how to solve are linear problems we are going to take an approach to solve the nonlinear equations of motion which relies on sequential linearization so how does this work well basically if you look at the Newmark incremental method, the only difference between the linear and the nonlinear is this term right here. The tangent stiffness, tangent generalized stiffness. And as you may recall, these terms, so the generalized load and the generalized stiffness, are these delta p hat i is the increment in load at step i plus terms that have to do with the velocity at i and the acceleration at i so delta p i is independent of the restoring force which makes it very convenient because that basically is the total load that we need to equilibrate at every time step. On the other hand, k hat, in the nonlinear case, k tangent, is simply going to be equal to the stiffness of the structure at that time step which is now not constant for every time step because as we mentioned right the tangent of this curve is changing with displacement plus other terms that do not include the stiffness or the restoring force So here, the term that is changing is Ki. That stiffness changes every time step. So how does it work? Well, if you look at table 572, you see here that, so first of all, you have to choose whether you're doing uh, average or linear acceleration method that defines the coefficients gamma and beta you select a 
initial conditions, you select a delta t from which the coefficients a and b are computed. From that, for every time step, you compute delta p hat, which is independent of the tangent stiffness. And then here comes the key, right? Determine tangent stiffness of the structure for that time step and compute the generalized stiffness k hat. Once you have that, you go into the iterative procedure, which, as you can see here, involves a couple of steps that can be a little confusing at first, but once you get the hang of it, it's pretty straightforward. You're going to compute the incremental displacement using your tangent k hat <clears throat> and you're going to define delta r as delta p hat and you're going to define the restoring force as your initial fs once you have delta u you add that to your initial to, to your prior displacement and you get your new displacement but then this part here this is where you determine if your system is in equilibrium. So basically, once you compute your displacement, you subtract that from your generalized restoring force. So this is this term right here, k hat minus kt times delta u. And then you add the actual restoring force that the system has at that level of displacement. So basically this is what you're doing. You have delta p hat that is applied at one step. Right? You begin with your initial stiffness and from that, you compute your first displacement. Now, when you go into the actual restoring force of the system, you find out that you don't have the capability to resist that delta p hat with that delta u. So there is a residual. This is the delta r that appears in this equation right here. That delta R has to get reapplied with your tangent stiffness and then you get a second incremental displacement but then you find out that that displacement is not enough and then you have a second delta R that has to get reapplied and then continue so on until that delta R becomes very, very small. And you have to select what that small means. Uh, I have written down here the steps just as they are shown in the table. And basically it's this term here that gets put back and you are iterating until delta R or the unbalanced force becomes very small. There are different kinds of nonlinear models that one can establish. The easiest one is the elastoplastic model. And I have here the five steps that define that curve. They basically have to do with the level of force that you have and the velocity, right? So if you're less than Fy, you're going to be linear, and then you don't need to iterate. But once you get to the plateau, if the velocity is positive, you stay on the plateau. If the velocity is negative, you start coming down on the linear range. And if your force is negative and your velocity is negative, you stay on the plateau. If the force is uh, in the plateau and the velocity is positive, then you come back to the linear branch. There is a nice exercise in the book, uh, example 5.5, that you can look at 
and try to solve there is the solution here with the load and all the steps so it would be nice if you actually took that as a homework and tried to solve it using the nonlinear Newmark method.